My name is Stanislav Yurchenka. I'm chief uh, researcher of uh, Bauman Moscow State Technical University and professor of uh, physics department. Okay, today we'll be speaking about the tunable soft matter, the soft matter with the tunable interparticle contractions. Uh, in reality, this is the lab of nature on the table where you could study various generic phenomena inherent for liquids and solids and uh, this is the very prospective basis for uh, future fundamental studies and uh, also for applications in 3D printing in manipulations with the particles with the cells and uh, novel materials of future and today my lecture will be devoted to the tunable soft matter the kind of soft matter where we can tune the interactions between individual particles to analyze very different generic phenomena inherent for liquids, solids, all the matter which, around, uh, which is around us. So, and uh, to start, I would like to discuss the scales, interactions, structures and properties. All the matter that you can see around the condensed matter and the main features of condensed matter very various liquids and solids and glasses uh, and crystals is that uh, the interactions in condensed matter are very strong comparing to the thermal fluctuations of individual particles. It could be atoms, molecules or even macromolecules, it could be proteins or uh, large microparticles, colloidal particles. So in result, the structures, the dynamics and properties are very closely related to each other. And depending on the scale, different theories, models and approaches can be used. All the features that can be observed with molecules and metascale systems, um, and we can use complex fluids and colloids. This is the systems of uh, microparticles dispersed in uh, fluids. So, and the next uh, point is what is the self-assembly and uh, how can we tune it? So, the self-assembly is the process when the different components, it could be microparticles or molecules, they form an unorganized structures or patterns. And uh, this process occurs without uh, external um, influence, without direct external direction, uh, action to the individual particles. The examples of self-assembly uh, and self-organization, the crystallization, condensation, its formation of various structures and general phase transitions, formation of dynamic structures, crowds, biological patterns and so on. So and therefore self-organization is a very generic phenomenon here and for physics, chemistry, biology, multi-agent and social, social uh, systems. So, and the next, my point is, what is the soft matter? This is a very interesting kind of condensed matter, uh, and this is a subfield of condensed matter physics, physics of soft matter, uh, where we study the various uh, systems, um, structure altered by thermal or mechanical stresses, and uh, with a large magnitude due to thermal fluctuations. The main objects of soft matter are ubiquitous for um, nature about us and for different technological processes because liquids are soft matter. The colloids and emulsions, polymers, forms, gels, surfactants, granular materials, liquid crystals, biological materials, membranes, proteins and so on. All these kinds of matter is the soft matter. And it means that all we need is soft matter. The soft matter allows us to perform very interesting studies and uh, we can obtain a lot of insights into the physics of liquids and solids with the so-called particle resolved studies. The fundamental problem of condensed matter is the understanding of structures and properties of condensed matter. And uh, if we could analyze various collective dynamics and phenomena at the level of individual particles, then we can study phase transitions, nucleation, coalescence, and critical behavior, diffusion, glass state, and so on, uh, using only individual particles and the tracking of their motions. Because if we use uh, colloidal suspensions, 
then we can um, track the individual particles and uh, analyze the many body dynamics. So, for example, here you can see the uh, colloidal suspension monolayer uh, in gaseous uh, liquid-like and crystalline-like states. And uh, basically, the interactions between colloidal particles, this is a particles uh, of microscale size uh, in uh, liquids, for example, in water, uh, they can be charged and or they can be sterically stabilized if we use the polymers at their surfaces. And uh, typically, the both of these kinds of interactions are repulsive. The particles just repulse at short distances and uh, don't interact with each other at large distances. Another kind of interaction, if we use the liquid with the polymer molecules. So in this case, uh, we have the so-called depletion forces. When the two particles are very close to each other, two microparticles, they could be so close that uh, the polymer molecule cannot penetrate into the uh, space between two particles. And in this case, uh, we have the uh, attraction. This is a very short-range attraction, but already this kind of attraction allows us to study condensation in such system. So, some of examples of phase transitions which could be studied with the particles of studies, uh, with the colloids, and this is the uh, transitions between different solid phases, between fluid and crystal, and uh, transitions uh, between fluid and the glasses, and it also could be formation of uh, so uh, developed uh, structures, um, the liquids, this is the colloidal liquid, when we have the different colloidal particles which range into disordered spatial structure, very similar to typical liquids. <coughs> it could be also interesting uh, for formation of colloidal crystals, uh, the structures where different particles uh, are arranged into crystalline, spatially periodic uh, structures. And uh, such systems could provide very unusual um, photonic materials and materials for photochemistry. So the assembly in colloidal suspensions could be arranged with the very different mechanisms. It could be self-assembly in external fields, for example, typical gravitational sedimentation. It could be self-assembly in external electrical or magnetic fields, and we'll discuss it later. And it could be self-assembly with thermal actions or with the optical tweezers. Um, one of the most interesting um, approaches to self-assembly, the application of anisotropic or rotating electric fields. So examples of uh, anisotropic electric fields are shown here. If you apply electric field, then the particles uh, become polarized and uh, start to interact at the dipoles. They attract in some directions and repulse in another direction. And due to this, you can observe formation of uh, so-called string fluids and uh, this is a reverse, reversible transition because if the field is uh, turned off, uh, then the structures will be uh, disorganized. So here are some for examples of uh, complicated crystalline structures in uh, anisotropic external fields. It could be also shown here um, string fluids and known as uh, electrological colloids. And the main challenge today in this area is uh, to design interactions and self-organization, materials and structures. So and, uh, a very prospective way is uh, to apply rotating electric or magnetic fields. The principle is very simple. If we apply external electric fields that this field polarizes the colloidal particles and the liquid around them and induce their dipole-dipole interactions. It means that 
the particles attract in the direction coinciding with the direction of external field and repulse in the perpendicular direction. But if you rotate the external field very frequently, then it turns off that the attraction is more strong than repulsion. And as a result, we have the long-range dipolar attraction between individual particles. And we have the system where we can um, arrange such interaction. This is a setup which we developed in the framework of uh, our project supported by Russian Science Foundation. And uh, therefore, uh, today my lecture is a very great pleasure for me and honor to uh, explain you some results which were supported for these uh, five years of our work. So here we have the system uh, where the electric field can be created in the colloidal cell uh, in such manner that we can manipulate, uh, we, we can rotate the electric field uh, to induce the tunable interactions between individual particles. So this setup provides the very prospective capabilities and this is the lab of nature uh, on the table. At some distance from the electrode system we have the distribution of electric field and you can see here uh, in the figure D that we have uh, the most um, homogeneous distribution of electric field in the plane of colloidal monolayer and it means that we could arrange the interactions between individual particles in exactly the same manner uh, or the very large distances. So up to 10,000 of particles could interact with each other exactly with the same um, interaction law. So and that's what we have uh, in result. We, have, we can tune the rotating electric field and uh, we have the attraction at large distances and repulsion at short distances, very similar to um, typical molecules. But we can tune the attraction, and if attraction is very large, then the particles could range uh, into the crystalline structures. But if we, um, if, the, uh, if we decrease the strength of the electric field, then we could melt the crystal and we can we could analyze the dynamics of uh, these fundamental phenomena, melting of crystals, which is um, which widely features in nature, and uh, probably uh, this is one of the most um, w w one, of, one of the most ubiquitous uh, phase transition in the nature. So, on it, some a couple of uh, words about physical mapping to molecular system. So in the result we have the typical colloids, the usual colloids, tunable colloids and molecules. On the contrary to molecules which we cannot see in real time regime, we can observe part motions of colloids and tunable colloids. We also have short range repulsion in both cases. And uh, in uh, typical molecules, we have long-range attraction, um, and we can arrange it with tunable colloids. And we have many-body interactions in tunable colloids. And they are not so well studied. And this is very good. So now we performed experimental measurements of uh, interactions in uh, tunable colloids. So this can be done just with observation of the motions of individual particles in dilute suspension. And in result we obtain a very interesting result that uh, the interactions are indeed dipolar at long distances and uh, we can tune the intensity of the attraction. And here in the figure D you can see that uh, the theoretical curve we calculated uh, exactly agrees with the experimental observations uh, depicted by red symbols. And we observed that the attraction in this case is very sensitive to internal structure of the particles. This is a um, very prospective result because it means that on the contrary to 
typical colloidal particles where interactions are provided by the charged surfaces. Uh, with the tunable colloids we can um, construct, we can design the interactions with the internal structure of particles. And we even can design the uh, tunable interactions with the anisotropic distribution of the uh, potential. Very similar to patchy colloids, the colloids with the inhomogeneous distribution of uh, charges. And uh, this situation is very similar to proteins. Some of proteins also can be considered in the first approximation of the patchy colloids. And uh, we observe that two simple uh, dipolar approximations are unsuitable, but the interactions are sensitive to internal structure of colloidal particles. And now I would like to show you uh, the process known as a spinal decomposition. If we consider the homogeneous uh, suspension, initially a homogeneous monolayer of disordered particles, and uh, at some moment we apply it rotating electric fields and its strength is enough um, to organize self-assembly uh, self, um, in this system. Then we observe formation of uh, condensed clusters shown here and uh, after some moment uh, these clusters could be uh, crystallized and uh, they arrange in uh, crystalline structures and uh, then we could observe the uh, routing of uh, these structures. So that's the example of spinal decomposition. So here uh, we see the initially homogeneous liquid layer. Liquid because we can observe the uh, individual microparticles and they play a role of uh, quasi atoms. The structure is homogeneous but disordered, like a uh, typical liquid. And at some moment we apply rotating electric field and induce attraction between the particles. After some time you can see the formation of uh, droplets, very similar to condensation. And then they become organized into crystalline structures. And if we turn off this field, then we'll observe the um, disorder structure again. So when uh, one can observe these structures for a long time to analyze the uh, dislocation dynamics, for example, or dynamics of uh, color sense uh, of different crystallites. So as you can see somewhere here. But if we have the uh, condensed clusters we should uh, have the instrument for analysis of them. And we developed a novel instrument, novel tool, a method of phase identification because we have the typical problem is uh, to separate the particles belonging to the condensed cluster uh, which you can simply identify um, with your eyes, but uh, this is not so simple problem for uh, anal data analysis if you have the terabytes of uh, video. And we developed the method based on analysis of Voronoi cells. Uh, and uh, this is based on the fact that in condensed matter the distances between the nearest particles uh, are um, distributed, uh, they, they are practically, practically the same. And mean square displacements of the distances uh, from their equilibrium uh, distance is very small. But if you consider the gaseous particles or particles at interface then the distance fluctuations are large. And you can use these parameter to identify condensed clusters. So for example, here is the result of application of this method for analysis of a liquid cluster near the triple point. So just after the uh, crystalline uh, cluster is melt 
and near critical point. So we can see that the method works well, uh, both uh, near uh, triple point and uh, near critical point, um, where the surface of the clusters is very uh, developed. And uh, here, there is example of how this method works in the case of uh, our colloidal experiment uh, for crystalline cluster, the cluster with the ordered distribution of particles. And uh, the same cluster is shown in uh, panel D, where the particles are arranged in dis disordered uh, condensed structure, the liquid cluster. And uh, you can see that just analyzing the distributions of the Voronoi cells, the cell uh, occupied by each particle, you can observe the average density of the state, both in crystal and in liquid, and also we can analyze the drop in the density um, during the phase transitions. And the phase diagram of this colloidal system in rotating electric field. So here, the red points are experimental results, and the blue rhombi uh, are results of molecular dynamic simulations. And um, orange symbols are results of molecular dynamics, but if we assume that the interactions are not many body, but the pairwise. So I would like. A, a uh, to mention uh, um, something about the uh, nature of uh, these many body interactions. Because the, uh, we have um, the interactions induced by external electric fields. And it means that uh, the external field, as I already have said, uh, electric field polarizes the particles and uh, they start, start to interact to each, with each other. But if we have the third particle, then it also should be polarized by external field. And it also creates itself electric field. And it means that uh, this field should also affect the polarization of the first two particles we considered. In other words, uh, the third particle should affect the interaction between the first uh, two ones. And, uh, this is called in physics as the three body interactions, that the energy of the system is not determined by only the energy of different pairs. It's affected by the particular configurations of triplets. So you see here that uh, the pure pairwise interactions cannot explain the uh, phase states which we observe uh, in experiment. And uh, this is very inherent for typical matter, for typical liquids and solids, because the interactions between individual atoms and molecules are well known to be non-pairwise. The three-body interactions also should play essential role in uh, various phenomena uh, we observe every day around us. Uh, these phenomena are phase transitions, melting and condensation, and it's uh, self-assembly, this is diffusion, and dynamics of uh, various defects in solids, dislocations, for example. But the particular role of three-body uh, forces is still unknown um, and largely unstudied. This is because um, there is the challenging problem, there is still no suitable model system where we can uh, have uh, the very expressed three body interactions and at the same time we can observe the motions of individual particles. So in the next result uh, toward the design of tunable interactions with spatially rotating fields will be devoted to the different uh, types of rotating field. Uh, when we were speaking about the phase transitions in the system we created, uh, of course, this is the model system with enhanced three-body interactions, but uh, the way with the rotating electric or magnetic fields um, could be even more promising. Because if we use rotating conical fields that, depending on the angle of uh, precession of the field, um, we can arrange 
plethora of uh, interactions from, uh, for example, pure repulsive interactions to uh, long-range attraction and uh, short-range repulsive interaction. And uh, if we choose another combination of materials for particle and uh, liquid uh, in which the particles that are surrounded, uh, then we can organize the pure attractive interactions. Or it could be uh, double-scale repulsion, or it can be the interactions of barrier kind, very similar to reacting uh, molecules, which have the attraction at short distances and repulsion at large distances, the so-called marmaid interaction. Just example of uh, so the structures which could be uh, obtained with the uh, double-scale repulsion. So here is shown the example of double-scale repulsion, so-called core shell interaction. This interaction is inherent for colloidal particles with the polymer shell, or it could be also arranged with electric fields, in, with the conically rotating electric fields. And in result, due to the two scales of repulsion, some of very unusual uh, structures could be stabilized. It could be not only triangular or square lattice in monolayer, but it could be also the lattice with the um, quasi-crystalline order, the, known as quasi-crystals. And uh, depending on the density, we could obtain very different uh, kinds of uh, complex crystalline structures shown here the cascade of solid-solid phase transitions. And also, using particle result studies with colloids, we could study um, the uh, mechanics and the statistical physics of phase transitions between these complex crystalline structures. So the tunable interactions in spatially rotating fields could be arranged with the magnetic or electric fields. And actually, in our laboratory, we are working with the both kinds of tunable interactions with electric setup and with magnetic setup created not so um, far. Um, and uh, here, just the different kinds of uh, cartographs are provided in this um, figure. So you can see that uh, depending on the spatial curve uh, corresponding to the vector of rotating electric or magnetic field, you can arrange uh, these external fields so that uh, it would be corresponding to the uh, rotation in plane with the some Radonea cartographs of the field, or it could be conical cartographs when the field, uh, the vector of external field is uh, every time on the conical surface, or it could be cylindrical cartograph or ellipsoidal cartograph. And uh, the most interesting that depending on the parameters of uh, these cartographs, you can uh, arrange different kinds of interactions. You can design the interactions between individual particles to observe different phenomena which you would like to study. And uh, here, example of uh, magic cartographs uh, is provided. This is such parameters of the external rotating electric field shown here. When you will observe the homogeneous, the uh, spatial isotropic uh, interactions between the particles. So, and these kind of interactions um, would open uh, a very exci exciting prospects for analysis of uh, phase transitions in three dimensions. So our previous studies uh, were devoted to the two-dimensional monolayer systems. But here, um, with the magic cartographs, we could make the step into the physics of three-dimensional uh, three soft matter with tunable interactions. And the next uh, part of my lecture, so um, we have shown that uh, we can arrange interactions between the particles uh, with rotating fields. We have shown that we can uh, design the kind with the complicated distribution of external fields in space with the complicated cartographs. 
And uh, the third step is that we can additionally design the interactions with the internal structure of particles. We can use composite particles with the core shell structure or it could be core with nano inclusions. And depending on the internal structure and depending on the internal materials, we could change and adjust the interactions at uh, small distances between particles. So exactly these range of interactions when the distances between two particles are smaller than uh, two uh, their diameters, this range is very important for physics liquids, solids and uh, structures which, uh, of novel materials which could be uh, obtained with this kind of self-assembly. So here just uh, an example of uh, polarization of core shell particle. We have the core polarized in one manner and the shell which could be polarized in a, uh, another manner and uh, we could combine the polarization of core with the polarization of shell which could provide a different contribution to the interactions at short distances and in result we could construct the interactions between two particles. Uh, like in nature the interactions between different atoms are constructed with the electron clouds and uh, we can uh, do something uh, similar but in micro scale uh, just with the design and uh, engineering of internal structure of particles and this is very interesting because we can use anisotropic internal structure of particles it could be um, used for a creation of uh, patchy like colloidal particles uh, but with the interactions tunable by external fields. And uh, different mechanisms of interactions uh, are typically being applied, but the electric field and magnetic fields are very prospective. Of course, the future uh, in this field should be related with the combination of different mechanisms, electric fields or magnetic fields and optical fields. And uh, today we are going in our uh, laboratory to the organization of very complex self-assembly when we can precisely control the interactions between the individual particles with the electric, magnetic, optical fields, temperature gradients. Um, we can adjust the interaction with the different um, solvents, the fluid in which the particles are dispersed. dispersed. Uh, we can arrange depletion forces or attraction at uh, different droplets um, or we can use uh, combinations of dipolar and heterophobic interactions and uh, dinner coated spheres. So all these mechanisms are very prospective for design of interactions between the particles which is the basis of uh, self-assembly in soft matter with tunable interactions. And how about the perspectives for studies of uh, phase transitions? So the prospects are very wonderful and fruitful because um, the most of phase transitions were studied with colloidal systems um, where the particles just repulse from each other at short distances and practically don't interact with each other at large distances. But here you can observe that uh, these phase transitions could be the transition solid-solid because between different crystalline uh, structures or it could be crystal liquid phase transitions including melting and crystallization in two-dimensional or in three-dimensional systems. Uh, it could be homogeneous or heterogeneous phase transitions it could be transitions from crystal to gas or uh, it could be um, sublimation and condensation and it could be a transition from crystal to glass or um, vitrification and dilation. And uh, the most of these phase transitions have been started only with the repulsion. The role of attraction is still uh, remains to be largely unstudied and poorly understood, uh, as well as the role of uh, many body interactions. But with the system of uh, particles in rotating fields, we see that we can uh, reveal the role of three body forces, 
and long-range attraction in all these fundamental phenomena uh, which, widely features, uh, which widely feature around us. And the prospects in this field are therefore are related with the analysis of domains in crystals, with the dynamics on gels, the dislocation dynamics in crystallites. It could be even assembly of uh, biological cells. It could be 3D printing assisted with the electric fields. And um, to conclude, which time uh, do we have? We have, we have the time, okay. To conclude that self-assembly is ubiquitous in nature and technologies and a very um, interesting that this is the fundamental phenomena in the basis of uh, phase transition at, uh, up to the novel technologies as 3D printing with electrically, uh, with electrically assisted assembly of particles. Would you like to create new structures, materials and patterns? Just construct the interactions, the, the way and you can, do, you can do this with external fields. But also you can perform particle result studies from gas to solids, just using the tunable interactions. The experiments, theories and MD simulations can be compared and uh, comprehensively analyzed. This is synergy and interdisciplinarity of this field. And such studies should help us to understand how collective phenomena of many body um, and many body dynamics, how this uh, is governed by interactions between individual particles. And applications in soft matter, material science, chemical physics, microfluidics, and manipulation of colloidal particles and clusters. So, and, uh, thank you for your attention.